Hey guys, I'm excited to show you an extremely useful Photoshop technique today that I call Chain of Smart Objects. The example I'm going to use is another interior design visual, but this workflow can be applied to all kinds of creative projects. You might recall recently we worked on this project where we created the floorboards and learned how to use perspective pattern in Photoshop. This time I'm going to show you a technique with smart objects on this example. So we have a hallway this time and I already went ahead and prepared a couple of things here. First of all I have a layer group with the cleanup so I can just remove a couple of things that I don't want to see in this visual. Then I have some decorative elements and I also have a layer group here on the top called textures where I have a couple of things prepared that we will be using for this tutorial. So my aim is to create a visual for the stairs and this is roughly what we are going to build in this tutorial. So let me walk you through it step by step but most importantly the key is that we will create a chain of smart objects and you will learn why this is such a useful feature in Photoshop. So first of all let's just turn on the textures and I'm going to start with the top of the steps in the stair and for that I'm going to use this dark wood. So I'm just simply going to copy this out from the textures here on the top and I can turn off the rest and I'm going to rotate this around holding down shift key I can make sure it's 90 degrees exactly and then I will turn this into a smart object. So this is the key. Before you do any other distortion or rotation, the purest form of the shape is when you should save it as a smart object and ideally the highest resolution possible. So definitely before you start making it smaller, scaling it down. So what I'm going to do is right click and choose convert to smart object in the layers panel. And now that it is a smart object, that means we can resize it without losing any details of the original quality but more importantly we will also have the ability to have them all connected so all the steps in the stairs will be all connected you'll see how it works so let me just move this down here and I'm going to create the first step here first of all let's use free transform command or control T and then to create perspective distortion I'm going to use command or control key and drag these control points around so this is skewing or perspective distortion depending which handle you grab and there you go the first step is already in place. Now to make it look more realistic we will also create the nosing. The nosing is the bit that wraps around the step so I'm going to copy this alt click and drag or option click and drag and then I'm going to make it much smaller than the other detail or much more squashed in and I'm going to drag it out something like that. Now when we zoom closer we can refine this even more. I think that looks quite good. The only thing is I would say this one can be slightly darker so I'm going to also use an adjustment on this and because it's a smart object adjustments are added as smart filters which is brilliant. Again just saving space and making it easier and also most importantly non-destructive to apply them. So anything that you do non-destructively means that you have the flexibility to make changes to it later. So what I'm going to use in this case is curves, command or control M and with that I'm just going to make it darker, something like that. If I drag this curve up it gets brighter and that's also quite nice but in this case I think it makes more sense to turn it darker because the light source is more from above so the top would be brighter as you can see the light is mainly coming from the top. So I think that looks quite realistic. So this is what I meant it's non-destructive adjustment because it's a smart filter I can just turn it off turning it back on and if I don't want to see this I can even hide it so it just takes less space in the layers panel. Now that I have these two elements ready I can start duplicating them so I select both of them together using the move tool alt or option key I can make the duplicate. So first of all I'm going to adjust the size probably needs to go up somewhere there and then let me see somewhere around here and then 
somewhere there in the corner. All right that seems like a good fit and then I can adjust the nosing as well command held down while resizing I can drag it into place so you can see how quickly and easily we can generate multiple versions of the same element now I'm going to do one more and I'm not going to go through all the steps because it just keeps repeating the same technique so I'm just going to do one more there you go holding down command when using the move tool you can also control on pc you can also switch between layers so just simply command or control click i can select the one that i want to work with and another big advantage of working with smart objects is that it preserves the distortions as well so you have the control points exactly at the corners unlike normal layers where you would have like just a bounding box around it and you wouldn't be able to handle the perspective as well as this so it's definitely smart objects is one of the key features in photoshop that if you haven't been using already i highly recommend learn to work with them because it makes work much easier so let me see maybe a little bit this one can come out further down and also here come down a bit further and then this one we just drag in i'm just using the same shortcuts as before and that looks quite good now we can already put all of this into a group command or control g once you have the layer selected so we can turn it on and off easily to see before and after right so that looks quite good i think and the best thing about this is that because all of these elements were starting from the same smart object they are essentially instances of the same element and if i update the source all of these will update at once let me show you how this works so if i double click on one of the smart object thumbnails it opens up the source if i come back to the composition and i grab one of these layers in this case this bright wood and put it in here so put it inside the same smart object and just simply align it with the free transform tool i will be able to have another detail on top of it and i can call this light and that one dark now if i save this smart object go to file save and go back to our composition which is this one here see it immediately updated and not only that but even the nosing bit that we used smart filter on will also have already that slightly different shade so everything is fully non-destructive and flexible so i can always go back again to the smart object source turn off the light save it and go back now it's brown again or dark again and just like in the previous tutorial i showed you if i use undo redo even without going inside the source of the smart object i can see the differences or before and after so that's a very quick and easy way to see which one works better before we continue i just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program for a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Now let's just take this one step further and I'm going to do also the front part of the stairs. So I'm going to call this one top. And I'm going to use this texture. So I just created a duplicate. It's a very nice decorative tile that can be used. Might be a little bit over the top, but I think it can work. So before we do anything, don't forget to turn this into a smart object as well. So I'm going to right click, convert to smart object, and then we can move it underneath the rest of the design here and i'm going to start using the free transform as before so command t or control t and then holding down command or control i'm doing the perspective distortion setting it up to something like that 
all right and then duplicate align free transform align done duplicate align free transform also align and done there you go that looks quite nice again i'm going to put these into a group and i'm going to call them front so now we can turn it off turn it back on or turn both of them off turn both of them back on and just like before if i wanted to change all of these tiles to something else in the future like this other pattern i'm just going to show you quickly here it is i can copy this layer command or control c go into the smart object source by double clicking on the thumbnail and command or control v to paste it in the ability to copy layers between documents was recently added in Photoshop CC 2019 and I love it, I use it all the time. So now we have two versions, so we have the original tiles at the bottom and this new one on top. So don't forget, all you have to do is to save the smart object and then when you go back you will already see it updating there. And once again, undo redo, I can compare which one I prefer. So I'm not going to continue adding all the additional steps but I can show you how it would look like so if I turn these off I can turn back the stairs that I created and all of these are built the same way so if I just change one thing all of the steps will update straight away even though they are all in different perspective and maybe even using filters on them because the source is the same that creates this chain of smart objects which basically connects them all together and one last bonus tip what if you want to have one of them independent from the others like let's say here on this step I would like to have something different what you need to do is to right click and choose new smart object via copy that means it separates it from the chain or the other instances so it becomes unique and I'm going to just mark this with a color I normally do this right click and set the label on that layer to red that makes it easier to find which one is the independent version but if I now go inside this smart object and maybe use another pattern here like let's say this one once I save it and go back you see it won't affect the other steps so that's the smart object via copy feature it's a way to detach one instance from the rest of the smart objects in your chain if you're interested to learn more about all of these cool features like smart object and smart filters check out our photoshop masterclass which goes through all of these and much more in depth and if you like this video and you would like to see more interior design tutorials on this channel let us know in the comment sections below Thanks a lot for watching, like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.